Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So you probably just got NordVPN and you're not exactly sure how to use it. As you can tell, the interface could look a little confusing if you're not really familiar with VPN. So today I'm going to show you how you can use NordVPN, just kind of explain a little bit about it and its utility and a few use cases where VPNs in general are useful. So I'm going to get into that, of course, if you're interested in going straight to the discounts, pricing, or even a full review, you can find those in the description in case you're interested. Besides that, let's just get into what NordVPN is all about. So essentially, a VPN is going to route your connection through a server that you select so that it looks like you're coming from there. So if I were to, let's say, connect to, let's just go with Switzerland. So I'll just click it right here. And as you can tell, it's as easy as that. It'll just connect to the server. Now, how do I double check that I am actually connected to the server? Let's say, you know, you want to change your IP address, which is like your phone number, by the way, for your computer. That's what uh, websites use to basically communicate with you. So let's say you want to check your IP address. You can just go to any IP finder and check out your IP address. And it'll basically look like I'm in Switzerland because again, I'm not in Switzerland. I'm just connected to the Swiss server with NordVPN. You've got over 6,000 servers in 61 countries. So anytime I want to look like I'm coming from a specific country, I can just select the country and that's basically it. Now you can use the map and you can also search for the countries here or just go down the list. There's up to 61 countries and you do have some specialty servers here, which I'll briefly talk about a little bit later on. But for now, let's just stick to how you can use the VPN. As you can tell, it's very simple. Um, I can go ahead and pause it or just simply turn it off. And that's it as far as turning it on and off. Now, what you want to do in this case is understand a little bit more about NordVPN so that you can use your money's worth. So let's just take a look at the first feature here, and then I'll talk about some of the most popular use cases for uh, VPNs in general. But threat protection is basically a mini antivirus. It's going to protect you from any harmful files as well as ads and malware. Now, MeshNet is essentially encrypted remote access. So this can be very useful if you want to uh, share files over the encrypted network of NordVPN with selected friends of yours and whatnot. And there are also other uses for MeshNet, but I'll talk about them later. You can ask me in the comments, of course, if you have any questions. A uh, dark web monitor is going to keep an eye out for leaked data that's linked to your personal information. And now if we go to the settings here, you'll notice we have general. This is just, you know, app preferences and whatnot. But you want to go to connection, make sure that you're using the NordLynx protocol. This is the fastest protocol. And besides that, you've got the kill switch and split tunneling. Now, you just want to understand these two features so that you know whether or not to use them. Now, the kill switch is going to be very useful, especially if you're in restrictive countries or if you want to just minimize any IP address leaks or any kinds of leaks. And if you want to make sure that your ISP or government or whoever else could never, ever take a look at your data, even when the VPN is disconnected, you can just turn on this kill switch. And that's basically it. Uh, and you do have two options here. So disable the internet access when a VPN connection drops unexpectedly, or when you just manually disconnect it, it'll also disconnect your internet connection. So this is a super useful feature, especially again, if you're in restrictive countries. And you can use the app kill switch, which will close the selected apps rather than closing uh, the entire connection or disconnecting you entirely from the internet access. So a very useful feature. Now, some of the most popular use cases for VPNs is streaming because streaming content essentially differs from region to region. So if let's say you're abroad and you're not able to access, um, you know, a specific show that's only available in the US library of Netflix, well, you can connect to an American server and watch your favorite shows, whether it's on Hulu, Amazon Prime Video, or Disney Plus, or any other US only uh, streaming service. On the other hand, of course, if you are in the States and you want to connect to a European server so that you can get access to European libraries, 
For example, um, Friends, I think, on Netflix is not available in the States, but it is available in uh, European libraries. So you can connect to a European library and get access to the series Friends. Uh, besides that, people use VPNs for torrenting. I use it for torrenting. So anytime I uh, torrent something or engage in any peer-to-peer -peer activities, uh, if you didn't know, when you're torrenting, anybody that's downloading the same torrent will be able to see your location, IP address, country, and a bunch of information that you don't really want to give out. Uh, so in this case, you use a VPN to hide your IP address. You also use a VPN to protect your data when you're on public Wi-Fi. Essentially, it'll encrypt your data so that it looks like a bunch of jumbled code to any hacker that's trying to access your data, um, especially on public Wi-Fi's, which are not secured, you absolutely have to use a VPN. Otherwise, you'll risk uh, compromising your data, whether using public Wi-Fi, using your phone, PC, or iPad. If you're in the airport, if you're in a cafe, or any other public place, you absolutely need to use a VPN. Uh, unless you're in a, a secured Wi-Fi, maybe your friend's Wi-Fi uh, or your own Wi-Fi, that's the only place where, you know, you could maybe not use a VPN if you don't want to. Uh, so these are three of the most popular use cases. Hopefully you also know how to use a VPN now. So again, to just kind of demonstrate. So let's just say I want to access Hulu. Let's say I'm outside the United States. I want to access Amazon Prime Video, HBO Max or Hulu. I can just you know, zoom in here. Let's just say connect to the New York server and just know that if I go to Netflix or Hulu or any other service right now, uh, it will interpret as if I'm in the United States, thus giving me American content. And besides that, by the way, I know I said I'll talk about the specialty servers, but these are essentially servers that are catered to uh, specific activities or specific purposes, and they can be useful in a variety of situations. Um, more on that in the review down below though. And if you end up wanting to buy Nord, you'll find a discount down below. That'll make it a little cheaper for you so that you can save some more money. So feel free to take advantage of it while it lasts. And the coupon will actually be applied. Even if you check out this video like a year later or something, it'll still apply and give you the latest and most updated coupon or discount code. Besides that, if you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comments down below. I'll be happy to answer all of them and like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.